Thursday is the day the U.S. Navy will take aim at a dead spy satellite then. Tonight, News Center 5 has learned that a highly organized task force right here in Massachusetts is on alert and ready to respond once the bird comes crashing down. News Center 5's Mary Saladna has local live coverage. She's in Beverly tonight. Mary? And you know, if this satellite were to survive reentry into the atmosphere and land on U.S. soil, there are actually six federal emergency task forces that have been mobilized now to deal with the situation. As you said, one of them is based right here in Massachusetts. And what you're looking at behind me here is their mobile command post, their mobile communications truck, and even their mobile cafeteria, all now primed and ready to roll. Apparently this is the roster. They are firefighters, doctors, and engineers, specially trained first responders who've helped at Ground Zero with Hurricane Katrina and the recovery of the failed Columbia shuttle mission. Now they track a broken satellite headed toward the Earth's atmosphere, ready to respond in a matter of minutes. Within five or ten minutes, somebody is on the road. Mark Foster is the task force program manager. He says on this team, everyone is hazmat trained. In addition, we have a very robust uh, hazardous material technicians. We take 10 hazardous material technicians wherever we go. That's critical since it's the satellite's fuel tank full of toxic hydrazine that poses the greatest threat. According to the Pentagon, the toxic fuel is the main reason the U.S. will try to intercept and destroy the satellite before it falls to Earth. Basically, this is our communications van, so when we go on the road, it's our task force leader's office away from home. This is one of a dozen trucks full of state-of-the-art equipment that is now loaded up and ready to roll. If needed, it will take the entire 80-member task force only four hours to launch a search, rescue, and recovery mission anywhere in the Northeast or Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. That is a wide coverage area, and the Mass Task Force covers it. They are officially on alert beginning at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. But again, we are led to believe that the U.S. will not try to intercept and destroy that satellite until at least Thursday, the day after the space shuttle Atlantis is scheduled to return to Earth. Live in Beverly tonight, I'm Mary Saladin, News Center 5. Liz, to you. All right.